Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Mrinmoy Pramanik. I teach Competitive Indian Language and Literature at the University of Calcutta. Today we will discuss a module from Indian Aesthetics and this module is on Suresh Joshi and his contribution to Indian Aesthetics. In uh, the book uh, edited by Ganesh Devi, Indian Literary Criticism, Theory and Interpretation, Ganesh Devi commented what B. S. Mardhekar has been to Marathi, Suresh Joshi has been to Gujarati. Suresh Joshi was born in 1921 and died in 1986. He is one among the Avagarde writers in modern Gujarati literature. He is pioneered to bring modernism in Gujarati literature. Devi commented, his idea fails to be carried forward in almost all the areas of Gujarati literature, but his contribution to short fiction, literary prose and literary criticism is path-breaking. He has immense contribution in bringing self-awareness in Gujarati literature. His contribution in the theory of fiction is remarkable. He propagated the idea of Ghatana Vilop, which is minimizing the plot and emphasizing on the suggestive potential of language. Devi took a part from Chintayami Manasa, translated by Upendra Nanavati, to represent the literary thought of Suresh Joshi. And this piece talks about the theory of interpretation. Now, let us have a brief look on the history of Gujarati literature and this will help us to understand Suresh Joshi's, Joshi's contribution in Gujarati literature and literary thoughts. The history of Gujarati literature may be traced to 1000 AD and this literature has flourished since then to the present. It is unique in having almost no patronage from a ruling dynasty other than its composers. Well-known laureates of Gujarati literature are Hema Chandracharya, Narsin Mehta, Mirabai, Akho, Premanand, Premanand, Bhat Shamal Bhat, Dayaram, Dalpatram, Narmad, Gavardhan Ram Tripathi, Mahandas Gandhi, K. M. Munshi, Umashankar Joshi, Suresh Joshi, Pannalal Patel and Rajendra Keshavalal Shah. Gujarati literature is divided mainly into two eras or yug. The medieval and modern, with these eras being further subdivided, the medieval era 1000 AD to 1850 AD is subdivided into before nursing and after nursing periods. Some scholars further subdivide it as Rasa Yuga, Sagun Bhakti and Nirgun Bhakti. The modern era 1850 AD to date is divided into Sudharak Yug or Narmad Yug, Pandit Yug or Gavardhan Yug, Gandhi Yug or Anugandhi Yug, Gandhi Yug, Anugandhi Yug, Adhunik Yug and Anu Adhunik Yug. Now let us talk about early life and works of Suresh Joshi. Suresh Joshi is rightly deemed to be the forerunner of the modernist and the post-modernist trend in the post-independent period of Gujarati literature. His stature as a critic has grown manifold over the decades. He brought into Gujarati criticism the western methods 
of the critical evaluation of a work of art and scripted a new era in the history of literary criticism in Gujarat. Suresh Hariprasad Joshi, who ushered in an experimental and formalistically oriented literary culture, was born in Valor in Surat district of Gujarat. He acquired the master's degree and PhD from Bombay University and taught in colleges. He also joined the faculty of MS University, Baroda, later. He edited Falguni, 1945 to 47, Vani, 1947 to 51, Manisha, 1951 to 56, Shitiz, 1961 to 67, and Ithard, which through the decades separately and together helped develop a new generation of writers such as Sitanshu, Yasha Chandra, Gulam Muhammad Sheikh and other younger writers who eventually emerged as major voices of Gujarati literature. Suresh Joshi's works include Pratyancha Itara or Poetry Collection in 1961, Chinna Patra, Novel, Griha Pravesh, Short Stories in 1957, Natatra Suryavati, Short Stories, uh, Janantike, Essays in 1965, Gujarati Kavita no Aswad, Literary Criticism, and Chintayami Manasa or Essays. A few years ago, Gujarati Sahitya Academy, Ahmedabad, published two volumes of his critical writings entitled Suresh Josinu Sahitya Vishwa, 2005. The awards and honors he received include Gujarat Government Prizes, Soviet Land Nehru Award, uh, Ranjit Ram Gold Medal, Narmad Gold Medal, and Nanadal Memorial Prize. He declined the Sahitya Academy Award in 1983 for a collection of critical essay, uh, Chintayami Manasa, because the award citation did not recognize his creative writing. He generated a profound modernist enthusiasm in the field in the field and ushered in a new era in Gujarati literature. Deeply read in Eastern and Western philosophy and literature and drew on a whole repertoire of artistic strategies. However, Joshi's more ambitious work has always defied classification to fathom the nuances of his writings call for the finally honed skills one brings to the reading of Kafka, Joyce and Borges. The necessity that drove his work was the aspiration to reach out to a community of minds beyond regional and rational boundaries. Joshi's contribution. He brought modernism to Gujarati literature as like B.S. Marthekar to Marathi. His contribution to short fiction, literary prose and literary criticism is remarkable. He gave acute self-awareness to Gujarati literature. His critical writing highlights the process of aesthetic transformation in literary transactions. He introduced a theory of fiction in Gujarati known as Ghatana Bilop, which insisted on minimizing the plot element and enriching the suggestive potential of language. His collection of critical essays, Chintayami Manasa, 1983, received a Sahitya Academy Award. Like a new critic, Suresh Joshi proclaims that a work of art is self-sufficient and it does not need to and should not become the vehicle of cultural values. He vehemently opposed the supremacy of the element of story in creative writing and strove to establish the form of a work of art as an um, equally uh, significant part of the challenges of a writer. 
His critical writings mark a new epoch in the evolution of the modern literary criticism in Gujarat. He has left behind sufficient critical writings to inspire a lot of critical discourses on himself, himself for many years to come. Translating his critical essays from Gujarati into English is of vital significance as that exceeds the barriers of language and nationality. It is the need of the day to place his work on the global horizon because that is where it is destined to, destined to belong by the sheer originality of its outlook and its sincere and unbiased evaluation of literature and criticism in Gujarat. Now let us focus on Joshi's role as a critic. Suresh Joshi as a critic, all that one can say about a great critic can be said about Suresh Joshi. He came on the critical scene in Gujarat as the harbinger of a novel outlook towards literature as well as towards the way a work of art should be interpreted. He was the chief proponent of a critical pursuit which did not stop at thematic concerns of a text like many others. In fact, he went on to discuss the new ways of interpretations of the literary theory and criticism in the West, especially those which concerned themselves with the form of the text. Considering his views on form and his incisive way of evaluating literature, he can easily be termed a new critic, but he was one who did not stop at new criticism. Formalist moorings and beyond the formalist moorings of Suresh Joshi are evident in his writings and hence his dissatisfaction with the then critical scenario which did not move beyond the plot and characterization in the interpretation of a work or remained hostage to the moral message of a text. The insistence on the formal aspects of text is an undercurrent that runs through his critical text. While his other counterparts were busy reading the moral message of a text and its influence on the society, he was engaging himself on writing full-length articles on different dimensions such as how a writer employs his symbols, how a poet has to reinvent expressions, words in order to convey his ideas and how signs are at play in a text. He may be taking recourse to the Western literary theory and criticism but it must be borne in mind that he was equally conservant with literature of his times. It can be explained in this way. While he discusses the idea of symbol forming, which is Western, his examples are from Gujarati literature. Thus, he creates a dialogue between Western literary theory and Gujarati literature as well as literary theory. His major achievement lies in the fact that he was not inclined to stick to one favorite literary theory and spend the rest of his life interpreting text with the help of the same. He kept on moving with the currents of the literary theory and criticism of the world. He made it a point to raise some of the fundamental concerns of Gujarati criticism. Firstly, he questioned the sanity of those critics who simply refused to look beyond Indian shore or worse borders of the state of Gujarat. He points out time and again that the critical world needed to change the way it perceived a text. Also its critical analysis needed to be reconsidered 
keeping the world literature and literary theory and criticism in mind. He was very sad about the complete negligence being shown towards the form of a text in the Gujarati criticism of his times. To say the least of his predecessors, perhaps that is the reason why he took it upon himself to write full-fledged articles on each of the key questions troubling Gujarati criticism. For example, he raised the questions about the reasons for writing and reading poetry. He engages in a discussion on the time-honored question of responsibility of a poet. He writes in this vein to expound some of the fundamental conclusions of his study and analysis. He has been an iconic figure who fathomed the depths of the Western literary theory and criticism in an unprecedented manner. His discourse on literature is deeply rooted in the gamut of world literature. He had busied himself for years in a dialogue with the literary genius like Sartre, Camus, Kafka and Dostoevsky. He introduced the average Gujarati critic to the best which was being thought and discussed in the West. He does not end up writing reviews or reverential testimonies of the Western literary theory, but he goes on to critique each one of them and discusses its relevance and applicability to the Gujarati critical scenario. He also brought it to bear upon the analysis of the works of art in a practical way. He writes on the major schools of Western critical, Western literary theory and criticism and also on the leading Western minds who transformed the world. He discusses all the forms as they prevailed at that time in India and in the West and looked at them in the light of the newest possible critical approach and illustrate perhaps how criticism as an exercise has to be performed. His contribution to Indian literary theory in general and Gujarati criticism in particular is manifold and multidimensional. He viewed whether it is creative process of writing or the formalistic aspect or the relevance and effectiveness of creative writing on the society. Everything in, in a new light and with the unsparing rationality of a philosopher. Now let us talk about his theory of interpretation which is very much significant and Ganesh Devi in his um, book on um, Indian theory, Indian literary theory and criticism uh, actually adapted this part of Suresh Joshi's uh, writings on theory. According to Joshi, the poetry is creation and not imitation and so interpretation may cause the loss of spontaneity of a response and as a result give rise to anti-art intellectualism. He further states that in the name of interpretation the desired immediacy in aesthetic experience is generally uh, displaced. He says that mediocrity dominates the business of interpretation and, um, and uh, so instead of humble empathy with art, it shows an arrogant dissatisfaction. Joshi commented it in his book in 1983, Chintamai Manasa. First, Joshi begins to understand 
what interpretation is whether at all interpretation is possible interpretation is not artha or meaning artha is rasa in indian aesthetics in indian aesthetics we have talked about bagartha bak and artha so artha has significant role in dhani in rasa and artha is a crucial element to understand the rasa of a poetry or poetic creation interpretation therefore in joshi's understanding is analysis analysis of the aesthetic process through interpretation what do we analyze we analyze how do we get aesthetic pleasure that process of getting aesthetic pleasure from a text is analyzed in interpretation or this analysis of getting or knowing the process of aesthetic pleasure from a text is called interpretation then he raised a question what we do in interpretation how we do interpretation what is interpretation it is understood but how we do in how do we do interpretation and how important is this interpretation in analyzing language of a poetry to understand the linguistic activity of the poet this question is raised by joshi he uh, tried to find the answers of these questions that what do we do in interpretation what is the significance of interpretation or what is the role of interpretation in analyzing language of poetry to understand the linguistic activity of poet throughout his chintamayi manasa he tried to find all such answers he briefly defines interpretation in this way i quote interpretation in is analysis of the structure of a literary work so the whole structure of a literary work is analyzed in interpretation to get the meaning from the text to find the significance of the text as a whole we do interpretation what does interpretation do interpretation postulate the thematic as well as the semantic premises about a literary text so it talks about the thematic and the semantic premises of a text so interpretation is not restricted in the shape in the structure in the form or in the content or in the plot or in the narrative or in the character but it talks about all the premises what are there in a text all the premises of thematic and um, all the premises of structure language etc act of pointing at the suggested meaning of a literary text what interpretation do interpretation try to find out the meaning try to pointing out the suggested meaning which is vyanjana according to indian poetics which is the connotation of a text so interpretation either find it out or point it out interpretation find out the mutual relationships of images characters and episodes in a text through interpretation we actually relate the images which are created by the words or the images which are created by any other means in non literary product non literary creation so in interpretation we connect images 
with characters with episodes so this whole connection this circle of a text we find with interpretation and it shows that interpretation of one element of a text or one part of a text is actually dependent with the other parts and other elements of a text. What author want to say through a text? So the author's intention is also a subject to interpret, subject of interpretation. Whatever a critic does to a literary text is an interpretation. This is in very general manner, in general sense, Joshi commented that whatever a critic does with the literary text is nothing but interpretation. So primarily and at the end of the day, whatever type of study critic does with a particular literary text, it is not out of interpretation so interpretation in this sense is an umbrella term issue of interpretation or aesthetic experience is connected with understanding that through interpretation we can find the aesthetic pleasure the aesthetic experience we gather of a text through interpretation and it is very much cognitive it is related with the deepest thinking deepest deepest thought and thinking process of a reader or a critic and interpretation is very much connected with as it is cognitive as it is related with the deepest thinking and thoughts of a critic or a reader interpretation is actually um, connected with our understanding. Perception of meanings precedes its interpretation. That what is one's perception about the meaning? What is one concept of meaning? How meaning is generated? What is the context from which certain meanings are coming out? All are important in interpretation. So, the perception, the critic's perception, the reader's perception of meaning is actually uh, the work of interpretation. This perception is uh, itself is interpretation. Interpretation of poetry is possible when a dialogue is possible between a poet and his reader. And in that sense, uh, when in a mushaira, the shire, shire is reading out or uh, in, in, in a reading session, Dastan is reading out. It has a direct communication with the reader and the interpretation in that time is, is continuous process and simultaneously is happening with the reading by the author or the poet. So, in interpretation, according to Joshi, in case of poetry interpretation, that dialogue between the reader and the poet is very much necessary to find out the interpretation. Because poetry is not, or the mu music song is not a creation of one. Uh, it is actually creation of reader and the poet, according to Tagore because meaning is generated in a reader's mind and Joshi believes that reader is not only alone capable to generate the meaning of a poetic text but it is also a poet with whose association reader uh, generates the meaning of a text. Interpretation of the meaning of poetry is a prose rendering and it does not necessarily chance the uh, enhance the aesthetic enjoyment so according to joshi that while we are analyzing a poetry while we are interpreting a poetry it is a prose rendering of the poetry it is one kind of translation that poetry which is written in meter which is written in poetic glamour 
is rendered in prose form in interpretation but while it is rendered in prose form for interpretation or while interpreting it is rendered in prose form it is not um, giving or enhancing the aesthetic enjoyment because aesthetic enjoyment of poetry is necessarily hidden or associated with the poetic structure so interpretation in suresh joshi's sense understanding uh, doesn't give the aesthetic pleasure of a poetry aesthetic pleasure of poetry comes without initiating any interpretation poet has said verse versus poet has done so interpretation deals with this what poet has said and what poet has actually done in a poetic text uh joshi in other side he took interpretation and aesthetic enjoyment as two oppositional idea as we mentioned that in regard to poetry that the very personal and individual reading of poetry gives pleasure gives aesthetic enjoyment but while we are interpreting it analyzing it we are rendering that poetry in a prose style and it doesn't give or enhance the aesthetic pleasure because the interpretation breaks restructure the poetic formation and because of that interpretation doesn't give the aesthetic um uh, aesthetic enjoyment or aesthetic pleasure so according to joshi interpretation and the aesthetic pleasure is two oppositional idea interpretation must not render the aesthetic experience secondary and this is his warning or cautious to the critics that interpretation must not render the aesthetic experience secondary for interpretation should be happened in such way that interpretation itself will be a rasa text which will give an aesthetic enjoyment interpretation should not be uh, rude boring or harsh it also should produce some kind of aesthetic beauty for more details about suresh joshi's joshi's ideas on <coughs> indian aesthetics and his little thoughts you can consult the e text and there you can find all the references and all the details what and the quotations with all the details what used for this lecture thank you